kayo ba ay malapit kay President Dikong? Well, uh, in a sense na we belong to the same party, malapit kami. Uh -huh. But the truth of the matter is that ako ay nakausap, na, uh, I mean, I had a chance to talk with President Dikong nung presidente na siya only once up to now with him. When was the last time you talked to President Digo? Doon sa kanyang inauguration. Okay, so 2016, President. July yes. 2016. Sa Malacanang. Okay. Ngayon, ito ang PDP Laban Model of Philippine Federation. Itong executive summary. Binibigyan ang presidente ng katakot-takot ng poder. Nitong sa transitory period. Mm -hmm. Eh, yung transitory period, eh, at least 10 years. What do you think of that? Totally unacceptable, I would like to say. Kayo po, lahat kayo na nasa puder ngayon, who are elected officials, nandidyan po kayo dahil sa gusto ng taong bayan nandung kayo. Huwag ninyong isatabi yung proseso where the people would exercise their sovereignty to place you in power, just so you can stay in power forever. My God, I mean, an ano ba yan? Eh, nung, yung old Constitution, 1987 natin, Constitution, sabi ng Constitution, wala nang political dynasties. Hanggang ngayon, andiyan dyan pa. 27 years because Congress <coughs> has not passed a law. And now you are expecting this Congress to change the Constitution in the way you want it to be but may not be, you know, that, but, but they may not be in favor of their own interests. So Kaya, how do you explain that, Senator? Talking about political dynasties. Oh. The present wording of the Constitution states that political dynasties are prohibited in accordance with law. Okay. Yun nga, in accordance with, sino ang bang papasa noon kung ang mga political dynasties are in control so, of the processes of Congress? Therefore, when you revise the Constitution, when you talk about political dynasties, spell it out so Ayan. that you do not need any other law. Pero For example, the political dynasties are prohibited. Itong si Mayor, ang kanyang usawa, ang kanyang mistress niya, um, uh, anak niya up to the, uh, ang mag-anak up to the fourth civil degree, mm. first cousin yun, should not be allowed to inherit the a mantle of authority of uh -huh. that uh, forebear who happens to be the, you might say, uh, warlord or, you know, the, the power that be in that locality. Kasi, ang, ang idea ni President Duterte, they'll talk about, first thing, we wanted a, constitution, a constitutional convention, yeah. like you wanted. Eh, sinulsul, sulsul siya, kailangan mabilis na, etc. Mm -hmm. So now, it's a constituent assembly. Then he wanted the people to know what was what what the changes were that yeah. were needed, and he wanted a year for mm -hmm. that. Ayun ang kanyang original mm -hmm. timetable. E ngayon dalam dalawang buwan lang. So, what do you think the people should do under those circumstances? Mga kababayan, ang aking direct appeal sa inyo. Wag kayong magintay sa panahon na hindi na kayo makapagsalita. Magsalita kayo ngayon, openly and publicly, and through the help of our friends in media, maikalat naman sa buong sambayanan yung ating paninindigan. Very e, important. E, pa, pa, paano, pa, paano makakasilita ang mga tao ni hindi nila alam kung ano ang mga, a, ang mga amyenda at ano ang mga transitory provisions at saka, you know, in other words, the people would like to talk, but they don't. They don't know what's going on because it's secret. I mean, yes. you know. Yes. And by the way, Marshal Lobaito. You don't know. He did not. By in Tulutan, my goodness. Why do you think that now Congress will change its ways and be able to pass a constitutional uh, charter <clears throat> change that will be for the country rather for themselves? Alam mo, and it's a very good point. So, pagkat yun din ang aking stand that the best way of revising the Constitution is really a constitutional convention. Oh. But, as you pointed out, 
uh, Digong, uh, President Digong uh, changed his mind, probably because of the influence of people who said that, uh, you know, it would be faster and cheaper if we do, do it by constituent. Tignan mo yung Article 17 ng Constitution. Number one, ano ba yung mode talaga na sinasabi by preference na gusto na pag-amenda ng Constitution? Is through uh, Constitutional Assembly. Number two, for purposes of practicality, mas mura. Nandito na kami. The important thing is this. Kahit Constituent Assembly yun, mm. I am suggesting, number one, that both houses of Congress uh, in their committees should hold public hearings throughout the nation to hear ano yung daing ng mga taong bayan to be inputted into the, their uh, the reception of uh, uh, what should be revised in the Constitution. Good governance does not depend on the governors alone, but on the governed as well. The people as well. The people. Kaya nga. So, kailangan papasok ang taong bayan doon. Oh, hmm. Maganda yon. Hmm. Pero sa ngayon, the way it's happening, magkakaroon ng constituent assembly between January, matatapos ang constituent assembly by March, aba ilbibigay na yung sa plebisito by May. In other words, oh. parang, parang talagang <laughs> railroading it. There is no way na yung taong bayan are going to be able to be consulted. Do you want this federalism to be pushed through the way it is? Maganda ang layunin. The objective is good. Pushing for the adoption of the federal system. <coughs> but, you know, as the saying goes, <laughs> the means does not justify the end. It is very important na ang taong bayan should know ang punot dulo nito. Where are we starting from? How are we going there? What will happen when we get there? Naririnig nyo yan mga kapuso. Kailangan tayo talagang, you know, we take matters in our yes. own hands. Yes.